in the 1820s, as Greene County was officially becoming a county in Indiana, the Goose Pond Marsh and its neighboring Bee Hunter Marsh areas were thriving waterfowl destinations. The shallow basin areas were left behind by the last glacier some 120,000 years ago. When Congress passed the Swampland Act of 1850, farmers began extensive drainage of the area, converting these wetland areas to farmland, digging ditches, and installing underground drainage tile. Several farmers tried and failed to raise corn and soybeans, and at one point, it was even the state's largest cattle range. The heavy clay soil, an almost constant state of saturation, was ultimately not suitable for any type of farming. A few hundred years ago, before European settlement, this was all part of one big wetland complex. And as uh, Indiana was becoming settled and, and more populated, it had been drained, tiled, excavated. Prior to restoration out here, the Goose Pond area was 8,000 acres of very flat farmland in row crops, corn and soybeans. It's bisected by Indiana 59, so you have a state road running right down through the middle. Several houses, several buildings were on the property. It was a working farm. It was a farm. As early as the 1930s, there were thoughts of converting the area back to wetland. But it took almost 80 years for that to happen. The 1990 Farm Bill gave the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or NRCS, the new ability to purchase conservation easements and restore some of the historic 24.1% of wetlands that had once existed in Indiana. This program was called the Wetland Reserve Program. The Natural Resources Conservation Service is an agency under the U.S. Department of Agriculture, so we are a federal agency. We, uh, we have a goal that we want to conserve and restore natural resources on farmland and on private lands. The Wetland Reserve Easement Program has been a tremendous success here in Indiana. It is a program that we use to restore and then permanently protect lands that were wetland at one point but then had transitioned into agriculture and now we want to put those back to the original wetland that they were. In the early 1990s, the total acreage of wetlands in Indiana was down to 3.8%. Many wetland acres were successfully drained by early settlers for farming. But some of these lands are marginal for producing crops and flood often, costing their owners in delayed plantings and lost crops. These became the areas of focus for the easement program. Indiana had a large percentage of ground that was wetland in the past and so when that went to predominantly agriculture, some of it to urban, um, those areas no longer could filter and provide the flood control and the wildlife habitat that was there. And so the restoration of wetlands gives us, gives us an opportunity to bring some of that back. The first wetland enrolled in WRP in Indiana was in 1994. Thus 2019 marks 25 years of wetland conservation in Indiana. During that time, over 80,000 acres of wetlands have been restored and protected here. The Goose Pond, as it is known, is the largest of these projects. In 1999, after working closely with the landowner, partners, agencies, and the community, NRCS enrolled 7,138 acres of the Goose Pond and Bee Hunter areas into WRP at a cost of $7.1 million and began the work of planning, designing, and building the necessary components to restore the area back to wetland. 
The reason why restoration projects are so important, like the project at Goose Pond, is that they provide habitat where it used to actually be. Um, so, for example, at Goose Pond, I'm, it used to be majorly used for agriculture, and Goose Pond is situated between the Wabash and the White Rivers, and that is a major area where you would typically find stopping over shorebirds or marsh birds because they use those wetlands around those rivers um, to migrate and use those pathways to migrate north or south. And so with these wetland restorations, it provides that habitat yet again, what they once lost. Um, it gives it back to them. The restoration at Goose Pond was a tremendous team effort. We had a core group of individuals who started working on this project, probably 20 people. Um, so we had engineers, biologists, conservation planners all coming together to try to figure out what we were gonna do with this very large site. We started by doing a survey grade topographic survey of the entire site and that gave our engineers basically a 3D computer model that they could then see how the roads and the ditches and the utilities overlapped everything and how we're going to be able to really fit that together. In 2005, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, or DNR, purchased the easement area and some upland areas surrounding it to total over 8,000 acres. The area was named the Goose Pond Fish and Wildlife Area. In December 2008, NRCS completed restoration of the final section at Goose Pond. The total cost of restoration was over $7 million. It was a wetland here a couple hundred years ago, but now there are roads, there are ditches, there are utilities that are going through it. And so our obstacle always is, how are you going to make a site natural and still keep the drainage coming through for those neighbors who need it, still keep that road going through. This was a glacial lake bed. The soils are very heavy clay soils, the consistency of modeling clay that your kids play with. We had 25 structures, we had 36 miles of levee to build in this soil, and if you can imagine heavy pieces of equipment trying to push around this modeling clay, sometimes you could get stuck in this type of thing, and that, that happened pretty, pretty often out here. The management of Goose Pond is a partnership between the NRCS as easement holders and DNR as property holders. Funding and technical oversight is a shared responsibility. So we've got 8,000 acres of habitat that's intersected by roads, fiber optic buried cables, overhead power lines, all the infrastructure that's involved with modern day life. The property features a new office and visitor center with a panoramic observation deck, large windows to view wildlife, and restrooms. The 6,840 square foot building, which opened in 2016, uses sustainable and energy efficient materials. Goose Pond is a success um, to many people for different reasons, I think. For me, as, a, as an engineer with my background, it was a success when we just got through the restoration and then we saw the water fill up the pools and everything was happening. But um, now that we're 10 years after restoration, many of the people in this area would say the bird response shows that success. So the the variety and the number of birds that have come to this site along with other wildlife um, ha has been fantastic and um, people can come here and enjoy that. And I think that's a success. Lee Sterenberg 
is a volunteer with the Friends of Goose Pond. He has been involved since the beginning of the restoration. The National Audubon Christmas Bird Count mobilizes 70,000 volunteers annually to find and record species and numbers of birds across the Western Hemisphere. Goose Pond is one of those sites, and Lee Sterenberg leads the count. So one of the bird counts is how many species have, uh, have shown up on the property, and it's, it's 276. And that has been done with almost no forest. 36 species of shorebirds and 33 species of waterfowl and um, uh, a very, very healthy uh, spate of uh, grassland birds, etc. So that's one of them. Lee and others have documented 276 different marshland, grassland, mudflat, and waterfowl bird species at Goose Pond to date. This includes rare and endangered species, large numbers of common species, and one bird that migrates through Goose Pond from the Arctic to South America. Goose Pond is very special, and the reason why is because it's got a great diversity of birds, from shorebirds, marsh birds, to your land birds, your warblers, your sparrows, but it also provides some really significant findings of those birds that are just passing through and really rare birds that you don't necessarily find in North America. So they had like, for example, a ruff that came here, which is a type of uh, shorebird. It was a brilliant thing to put this wetland restoration between those two rivers uh, where birds could commute back and forth. And it really has enlarged things and it's enlarged the whole sense of what the North American um, Mississippi Flyway is doing. And that, that's going to continue to happen too. Rails found it immediately, rails, bitterns, etc., uh, usually in the ditches. As it turns out, in 2002, um, at the south end of what is now Main Pool West, I happened to run into a king rail, big rail, a, a large rail. I'd never seen one uh, in California and Texas. And um, I didn't realize until later, researching it, that was the first King Rail in Greene County since June of 1914. We're talking now about the history in the eastern United States of whooping cranes and sandhill cranes. And in the eastern United States, although Leopold was famously in his marshland elegy predicting that they were about to go extinct, uh, he could only find five pairs and, and a concerted effort uh, by the mid-1930s found uh, uh, probably about 25 pairs in the eastern United States and that was it. And because of the loss of, of, of the draining of rivers and the draining of wetlands and uh, the continued illegal shooting of them, although that had been stopped, a lot of it had been stopped, uh, there, was, there was a sense that they might go away forever. Uh, in fact, they went through a very narrow keyhole and they have recovered. Pelicans in Indiana, they've been wiped out. They were nearly, nearly wiped out entirely. Um, so we now have American white pelicans coming. We have big white charismatic birds in huge numbers. The first one that really, really lit the board publicly uh, was a roseate spoonbill from the Gulf. Wetlands are a critical part of our natural environment. They provide habitat for animals and plants, and many contain a wide diversity of life, supporting plants and animals found nowhere else. Wetlands also provide flood control and filter for better water quality. Wetlands are very important in so many ways. They provide higher water quality because they help to filter out um, any sort of chemicals that might be aggregating in certain areas, especially around agricultural areas. Um, and they also provide excellent habitat for a lot of water birds. Uh, water birds meaning colonial water birds, things like black crowned night herons, yellow crowned night herons, uh, your wading birds, shore birds like sandpipers and killdeer, uh, yellow legs, as well as marsh birds um, like the king rails and the spitterns and American bitterns. And a lot of these birds that I have talked about are those that are listed as endangered because of declining and a lot of their habitat is, is declining as well. And so these wetland restorations provide the habitat that they really need. The big white charismatic birds are just kind of a reminder 
uh, uh, and of course all the ducks that come that the duck hunters want to uh, harvest, etc. That's all a re one reminder of how important water is. But water is going to, you know, water is the future. Having a 7,000 acre wetland in your backyard comes with benefits. The local citizens of Greene County have worked to incorporate the wetland into their community. Uh, to get a bunch of kids out here and sift through the through the water and the muck and, and pulling out insects and macro invertebrates and, and showing them what's living in the water and, and watching them, you know, get their hands dirty and, and enjoy what is out here. Uh, that, that I think has been a really big uh, benefit to the, to the community. The Marsh Madness Sandhill Crane Festival is a community-based event timed to coincide with the peak Sandhill Crane migration at Goose Pond Fish and Wildlife Area. It has been held here since 2010. Now 20 years after the NRCS easement purchase, and 10 years after the restoration of the wetland habitat at Goose Pond, the management of the wetland continues. We have a wonderful partnership here between NRCS and the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. This easement is forever, and I think it's great that people are going to be able to come out here for years to come. It's about so much more than just the restoration and just the habitat and just the wildlife. Uh, it's the people, uh, it's the benefits to the community, it's the, it's the environmental benefits that, that are derived from, from the restoration. This pond is definitely a success story because there's so much diversity here, as well as um, not only just diversity in the way of wildlife, but in the way of state listed species. It really harbors habitat that can help um, just protect them and hopefully eventually reverse those declines. So it's definitely a success story just because you can see so much diversity here. Birds are being squeezed. Um, uh, birds need habitat. Uh, the habitat is rare, especially shorebirds. I mean, it's really, really disappearing. This has a, a quite stunning history of attracting birds building and they will come. Moving cranes, sandhill cranes, Hudsonian godwits. Uh, lots and lots of other birds. We expect some of that to keep happening in the future. It will be surprising, uh, and it's the sort of thing that needs to happen. The Goose Pond Fish and Wildlife Area is one of the largest and most successful wetland restorations in the nation. It is located just south of Linton in Greene County, Indiana, and is open to the public year-round. The NRCS Wetland Reserve Easement Program pays private landowners for easement rights to restore and protect wetlands of any size. Applications for the program are accepted continuously. Contact your local NRCS office for more information.